Five months have gone by since I have started my side business, a new and completely uh, unknown audience, uh, people who don't know who I am. I'm star I started that uh, in part to re-experience what it's like to be you, for those of you who are starting also from nothing. Um, and so I'm learning those lessons again, that new business, those people in that new audience, I never use my name there. I, whenever I advertise there, I always exclude you guys, this audience, so you don't know who, which that page is, and that page doesn't know who I am, who I, my background and everything. So that's a, that's a true audience from scratch that you can also copy. And the topic is not business or marketing or money or career or anything. The topic is spiritual growth. So I, I am also experiencing what some of you are doing, which is trying to grow a new business doing something that's not a hard skill, selling something that's softer than money or business or marketing. So uh, I, I want to experience that so I know what it's like in your shoes, so I can teach you better. I can be a better guide for you because I'm in, in it myself. So it's been five months and let me share with you what kind of lessons I'm learning now. So a couple of quick, I guess, numbers update is that I now have about 2,000 people who have engaged with uh, some of my content over the past five months, about 2,000. Not 2,000 fans, only have about 200 fans, so that's also instructive for you. Uh, your number of Facebook fans does not equal your number of people who have engaged with your Facebook content that you can reach again through warm Facebook ads. That's probably a lot of jargon, and you, if you don't understand what I said, uh, all you need to remember is this. Facebook fans is not how many people have actually engaged with your Facebook content. Your Facebook fans is just the people who bothered to, like, took the extra step of coming to your Facebook page and clicking like. But lots of people see your content who don't come to your page and click like. Lots of people just see your content and they might click like on that piece of content, but not on your page. So I have 2,000 engagers, but only 200 fans. So uh, that's because I've been advertising, and I've also spent $1,000 in five months on Facebook ads. You probably haven't spent that much. Uh, you don't have to spend $200 a month like I do. Start with $20 a month. $20 a month can already make a difference for your audience building, okay? So please, while Facebook ads is still working, uh, and it's still working pretty well, um, please spend at least $20 a month. If you can spend $200 a month like I'm doing, that's great. That really helps to build your audience without taking years and years and decades, right? It could take you months, months, and maybe a year or something like that. So, um, so th that's a quick update. And in terms of my lessons here, I'll, I'll start to share that with you. Uh, the first lesson, I'm looking at my notes here. The first lesson, relearning it, and I think my clients are learning this too, is that videos, are not the, the kinds of videos that I make, which are, I call them talking head videos, <laughs> very simple, authentic videos, are not good for new audiences. No matter how pretty you look, yes, no matter how pretty you are or how handsome you are, if you just make a talking head video without an enormous amount of editing, if it's just unedited talking head, nobody wants to watch it. Nobody. I mean, yeah. When I say nobody, I mean like, 0.1%, like maybe one up to 1% of the people you advertise to might want to watch 30 seconds to a minute of it. But advertised video, videos that you pay to advertise on YouTube or on Facebook to cold audiences, people who don't know who you are, videos like that have to be extremely edited. It has to be like the first three seconds are exciting. The first, the next seven seconds are also exciting. And then the next 20 seconds also capture their attention. And the whole thing has to be so interesting and exciting. And for somebody who has no idea who you are to go, well, maybe I'll watch. Because everybody is so used to seeing super hyper-produced video on commercials that if they don't already have a relationship with your brand, they won't care about you talking. No matter how smart of a talker you are, no matter how pretty you are, Honestly, now I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about some of my clients are way prettier than me, <laughs> way better looking than me, and even their videos to cold audiences are not working if it's just a talking head video. So takeaway, don't spend money 
advertising your talking head videos to cold audiences. Only spend money advertising your videos to warm audiences. As you know, I, I, I pay money in this business, in my main business here, I pay money to advertise my videos to you because you already have a relationship with me. You already know who I am. You already trust me. So you are much more likely to want to take the time to watch some guy talking for half an hour or even five minutes. Okay. So, so what I have learned in my new business is now that it's been, uh, I started doing my talking head videos in, in my new business. I started, I, I tried the talking head videos in the beginning and I advertise it to new people, nobody cared. <laughs> like thousands of views and like five likes. I mean, it, it's, it was just a waste of money, okay? But, now, but then four months after I had been regularly advertising my written content, so, so what do you advertise to cold audiences who don't know who you are when you're trying to build a new audience? What do you do? How do you build a new audience? Don't use video unless you are a video editor, unless you wanna take the hours or sometimes dozens of hours to produce an extremely well edited video. And that's a big, to me, that's a big time sink because you don't know if it's gonna do well. Okay, so that's why I think highly edited video is very risky just in terms of your time management. Whether you could do so many other things with your 50 hours or your 20 hours even, or even your five hours, okay? So much more you can do with your time uh, to, to build an audience instead of trying to figure out a, a super edited, high quality video. It's just, unless you're already a video editor. So. Um, so what do you, how do you build a new audience? Writing, text, not pictures. That's another danger that I've learned over the years and my clients are relearning again, is if you use pictures, images, quotes, memes to try to build an audience, you end up building people, you end up growing an audience of people who are not gonna buy from you because they just like pretty pictures, they like nice quotes, and they are not, they don't have the relationship with your with your brand that you know is is deep enough to want to spend even twenty dollars with you, twenty dollars maybe if you're lucky. But um, but you could say yeah, I, I built a huge audience with memes and with image quotes and with with pictures, and then you try to deepen that relationship with the audience. Maybe it, yeah, that could that could be a way of doing it. But I prefer just to start with building a real audience. And how do you start from zero and build a real audience? Words, writing, no images. Not a single image can be found on my new side business page. Not a single image. Not even attracting them with an image and then try to get them to read uh, the, the, the captions. No, no, not a single image. So I, I see so many of you doing this and pl please, please try what I'm saying. Don't use images on Facebook. Unless it's with your friends and family, unless it's with your warm audience, great. But when you're trying to advertise and build a new audience, images, oh, cute cat photo, and then some writing, you'll get a lot of likes because the cute cat photo or the, what, the inspirational roomy quote or whatever it is you're using the image, it's gonna build a fake audience. It's not building you a real audience. It's building a you an audience of people who just like to like nice looking things. So you would rather just use status updates. I write, I try to write 500 to 800 word. 500 to 800 words per post, just writing, no images, no links. Just you have to click see more or continue reading to read this long thing, this long ass post. And then I spend $200 a month. Okay, now I'm spending some of that money with advertising videos to my warm audience, but I spent at least $100 a month, $100 a month to advertise these 500 to 800 word status updates to cold audiences. And it works because I'm only drawing people who are going to say, you know what, I really want, I really am so passionate about this topic of spiritual growth that I want to read, that I am so passionate, I, I need it right now, I want it right now, I want to read. You know, and of course you want, you need to format it in, the, in a way that's readable, that's not just one giant long paragraph, but hopefully only every paragraph is only between one to three, maybe four lines, you know? So anyway, so that's what I'm learning again. Videos are bad for advertising to cold audiences uh, on YouTube as well, because I'm doing that with YouTube ads as well. People are like, I don't know who George Cow is. I, have, I don't want to watch his talking head video at all, right? So YouTube ads, you know, uh, to cold audiences. 
uh, I'm gonna start doing YouTube ads to warm audiences soon. But anyway, so uh, Facebook YouTube ads don't do don't do that for cold audiences. To try to build an audience from from zero. Use words instead. Use words, okay? And after you use words to build an audience for a couple of months consistently, then you start doing videos and advertising your videos to that existing warm audience because now you're deepening. You, you, you got them with thoughtful messages or with inspirational messages that are not just you know, 20 words, but you know, three, 300 I think is a good minimum. If you, if you, if you know, don't want to write 500 to 800 words or, or some, some of my posts are like 1,000 words or more, but just 300 is a good minimum, 300 words, good minimum on Facebook to build a real audience, okay? All right, um, and so my second lesson I learned is that, uh, oh, I, I was gonna say, so now that I've, I built an audience several months of these long posts advertised to cold audiences, now I'm advertising my videos, not these videos, but my spiritual growth videos, which none of you have seen because they're hidden. Um, I advertise my spiritual growth videos to, uh, to this existing new audience um, of, and I'm seeing regular engagers now, regular people who are commenting. I'm like, oh, I recognize their names. And when I start recognizing the names of commenters, that's a clue that now I have a real audience, okay? Because I recognize their names. Not, not friends and family or anybody I know, but I recognize the names because they, they've commented several times regularly now. Like, oh, these are real people, you know, re actually engaging with my content, so that's great. Um, Okay, the next lesson is to, um, you know, to realize that in business, especially when you're building a new business or starting a new audience, there is a tremendous amount of uncertainty. Tremendous amount of uncertainty. You don't know if it's going to work. And even what I say, you don't know if it's going to work. Ah, oh, George says... Text posts to cold audiences to build a you know to build a build a real business build a real audience. That's what works for me, and that I'm recommending that to clients, and that works for 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 clients as well. But it might not work for you, right? There is no. I'm sorry to say, there is no proven formula for you. You can't buy it, except for what you prove yourself. There is. Do not buy any secret recipes any proven formulas, any seven steps that will absolutely build your business of six, seven figures, don't buy any of that stuff because none of it is true. None of it is true except for the people for whom it worked, okay? And you might say, well, scientifically, doesn't it work this way or that way? There are always exceptions to the rule, always. And you might actually be the exception to the rule, who knows? So, so the, the second lesson that I've re, I'm relearning again is to say, you know, I don't know if my current George Cow strategies are going to work in this new business. Of course, I'm going to try it, right? I'm going to try it, but I'm also open to new things too. Um, so the, the mantra I'm repeating to myself again and again is, why not try it out? <laughs> okay, that's my mantra. Why not try it out? Uh, should I start making videos again, even though they didn't care about it four months ago, five months ago? Why not? Try it out. Should I post a second time a week now that you know I'm thinking of creating more content, but they've only been used to once a week content? Why not? Try it out. Okay. Whatever it is you're curious about, don't ask me, will this work for me? I can't tell you. Nobody can tell you. Not any marketing, your marketing coach, your business coach that you're paying $1,000 a month to cannot tell you if it's going to work. Only you can figure it out by trying it out on your business, on your audience, with your style, with your personality. That's the only answer, okay? All the courses you take from me are mere suggestions. Try it. Why not? Try it out. Okay, yes, taking courses gives you a step-by-step -step plan to try out but it's not a guarantee at all. Not even close to a guarantee. Not even close. I'm not even sure if it's 50% gonna work out for you. I'm not sure. So you, that's why I no longer make promises and please catch me. If I start, if I, if I make a mistake and make promises on my sales pages when I'm, when I'm trying to sell you something, if I make any promises, please say, George, you might have missed this one. This was a promise you made that you shouldn't be making these promises. I will no longer make any promises to you. 
the only promise when I'm trying to get you to pay me money to, to buy something from me, the only promise I'm going to make is it worked for me and it worked for these clients, but I'm never going to say it works. It's going to work for you. It might not 10% chance of work for you. Maybe, maybe not. Nobody can tell you and do not spend money on any program that gives you any sense that this will definitely work for me. Nothing will work for you except what you try and prove to yourself. So the only mantra is, well, why not try it out? And so if it's going to be, why not try it out? You might as well do something that's low investment, low effort, test it out. If it has some good effects, use more investment, use more effort, use more time. If it doesn't have good effects, leave it away. Maybe try it again in a few months, right? But leave it away for now. Okay, so that's the second lesson. Uh, the third lesson is when to work more. So up to now, I've only, on my side business, I've only been spending two hours per week on it, disciplined. It's actually less than two hours a week because it's on a Saturday afternoon and I want to like kind of stop working and, and go out there. So it's usually like an hour and a half to, you know, but an hour and a half to two, that's the, how much time do you spend on your business? How much, all of you who are saying, George, I work full time on a job. I have a family. Let me ask you the question. Can you carve out two hours a week to build your future? Please say yes. You have three kids. You, have, you work 40 hours a week in a job and you commute one hour each way. Okay, you just add up the hours and you have 168 hours a week. I'm asking you to spend two hours out of what 168 hours to invest in your own future and the future of your family. So if now I don't have a family, I don't have a job, so it's maybe easy for me to say two hours, but um, some of you do. Uh, Captain, I know, is here live. Captain spends, you know, at least two hours a week on his business. I only spend two hours a week, and I've already done what all the results that I'm telling you. Okay, I I write a 500 to 800 word post every week, every single week, without fail, without fail, no matter how I'm feeling. If I'm sick, if I'm visiting my mom, if it's my birthday, I worked on my birthday. I probably shouldn't have said that, but I worked on because it was a it was a day for me to do my my side business. So two hours on my birthday was kind of an honor. Like, you know, I don't make excuses. Ah, it's my birthday. I should take it off. It's not nothing special. It's just my birthday. Ah. So what I did was uh, that's not true. I I we we took two days. You know, we went away for two days. You know, but it was before my birthday, and on my birthday, I just I'm like, well, my wife's working today, so I might as well do my side business. So I spent, and it was it felt it felt like an honor. Like yes. Investing in my future on my birthday is the right thing to do. It was it was a smart thing to do. You know, it's it's a, it's a way to honor uh, my purpose and my being. So work on your birthday, people. <laughs> work on your future. At least spend an hour or two on your on your on your birthday working for your future. So that because it's an honoring your purpose, in my opinion. So um, and then yeah, of course I take regular time off. I have plenty of time off. In fact, one of my habits right now that I'm developing is called mindful boredom. I actually am bored a lot of the time. Not a lot of the time, sorry. But uh, evenings and weekends, I have a lot of boredom. I just like, well, I finish all my to-do lists. My email is clear. Uh, my side business, I'd already worked on it. What am I going to do now? What am I, la -di da play video games, right? So I'm, I'm learning mindful boredom and like, okay, you don't have to play video games. You don't have to surf Reddit all day long. Um, what can you do that's useful? What can you do that's mindful? What can you do that's purposeful in this precious life of spiritual growth. That's why we're here, in my opinion. We're not here to play video games. You know, we're not here to eat food. Food is wonderful, video games are wonderful, but we're here for spiritual growth as much as we can possibly have the energy for it. So it's like either spiritual growth or rest, okay? Everything is either spiritual growth or rest for me. It's like rest when I don't have enough energy for spiritual growth, and then spiritual growth is everything that I do, everything that I do. Right now, I'm spiritually growing. I'm hoping, remembering to bring humility to this, remembering to bring compassion, remembering to breathe, remembering to care, remembering to uh, be diligent, um, remembering love is the ultimate thing, ultimate, en ultimate energy everywhere. Um, everything I do, you know, and, and uh, when I'm bored, I try to sp read something spiritual or pray for someone or, you know, or do something spiritual to, to grow. Um, so anyway, next lesson. So uh, when, oh, sorry, when to work more. So now that I have been spending two hours a week without fail, 
since July, early July on this new business, I'm now ready to add a third hour a week. So I'm going to spend Sunday morning for one hour. It's, it's, that'd be perfect for me, for me, for, for writing. Instead of writing on a Saturday afternoon when I'm like kind, kind of tired from the week already, I'm going to be writing my blog post for the side business on Sunday mornings instead, starting tomorrow, in fact, or not tomorrow, uh, this Sunday. Um, so, uh, so, so, but the, the lesson is this. Some of you work too many hours on your business. You give yourself too many hours to work on your business, and so you are very inefficient with the time you spend on your business. I promise you. That's why I only gave my, I mean, that's a, that's a kind of a smart thing to say, I only get two hours a week to work on my business. What am I gonna do in those two hours? I better, dang, you know, be super effective in, in what I choose to do. Some of you researched, a couple of things I've noticed a lot of you do that takes too long. You're researching things on the internet. You are taking courses, online courses. Taking courses is fine, but you should be taking one session of the course and immediately applying the lessons from that session as much as you possibly can before you take the next session and blah, blah, blah. It should be like watching something or reading something, applying it. Watching something, applying it. It should be that back and forth. And sometimes it's watching something, applying, applying, applying. Answer, get, get questions, get answers to your questions, and then watch something else. Um, some of you consume too much content. Some of you uh, research too much. I do very little research. I do very little internet research except when I'm trying to implement something and I can't figure out how to, how to implement that particular idea. So um, anyway, some of you are spending too much time looking for information. Like you got to be better organized. You like have information all over the place. And I've heard from people like they spend hours a day just looking for things on their computer. I'm like, how is that possible? I spend no time. I, I'm very organized. I spend no time looking for information. Uh, I'll give you a shortcut for being organized. Put everything into Google Drive. Upload all your files into Google Drive. And then Google Drive has the best possible search. So you don't have to sort, you don't have to put things in the folders. Putting things in the folders is extremely inefficient, except for just a few folders. Maybe only a few folders. You shouldn't have like 50 folders. You should have like 10 folders at the maximum. And just and, and then use the search function. Instead of trying to figure out which folder things are in, you should be just using the search on your Google Drive or on your computer. Your computer has a search function for files too, except the computer search is slower than Google's own search. Put things on Google Drive. Google's own, Google applies its own brilliant search algorithm to your own private files. It's amazing. It's all still private, of course, to you, but you're using Google's uh, brain to search your private files. It's, it's just incredible. So, um, so when to work more is once you have proven that you're using your time effectively in two hours a week, four hours a week, six hours a week, then you, you should then add a, an additional hour or additional two hours, additional three hours. But don't say, great, I'm just going to work on my business for 10 hours a day. Then you, you're going to burn out. You're going to spend too much time at the computer. <laughs> Many of you are spending too much time at the computer, and no wonder you're not enjoying your business. You're, you're, you're just not being efficient in the time you're at the computer. Okay? So, um, okay, and then the next lesson that I've, I'm learning is keeping the tools simple. Part of why I can spend so little time working and get so much done, it, relatively speaking, is um, I keep the tools simple. So I'm finally going to start building a website for my side business now. Five months after I've built, I've, I'm building an audience, now I'm going to start thinking about building a website. I don't even have an email newsletter yet. I says, this should be like enlightening for some of you. Like, no, I thought email newsletter was number one, the most important asset in your business. No, no. The most important asset in your business is not your email newsletter and in your, in your email ad addresses on your subscriber list. No. The most important asset in your business is your relationship to your audience. That's the most important asset. And that can happen wherever they are. So I have a relationship with my audience on my Facebook page. I don't need them to join my email list. And yes, now I'm going to finally build a, a website and have an email list and encourage them to join my email list so that I can control that better in the future if and when Facebook is not my preferred mode of marketing anymore. But meet people where they're at and keep the tools simple. So now, as I'm starting to build a website, I, 
uh, was always thinking, gosh, I should finally start trying Squarespace. So Squarespace is supposed to be the more sophisticated version of Weebly or Wix. Weebly or Wix are what I've typically been recommending. So I finally, uh, this is not the first time I've tried Square, Squarespace. This is the second or third time. So I spent an hour again, like honestly, with my pretty good tech skills and with my good marketing intuition, trying out Squarespace again. My God, it's too complicated. It's, and it's kind of buggy compared to Weebly. So Weebly is what I use for my main business, georgecow.com. That's all on Weebly, completely on Weebly. Um, and I'm like, Squarespace, why can't you be as simple to use as Weebly? It's not. And so I decided to skip Squarespace again and then probably going to use Weebly. But the other tool that I'm looking at um, that you might want to consider for website building, so, looks super easy, is bookmark.com. B-O-O-K-M-A-R-K, just like just like a bookmark. Bookmark.com. Um, I, you know, I'm gonna try it out and and because one of my clients said she's really easy for her. So and it looks really easy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a try. Um, okay, and final final lesson is um, just keep publishing. Just keep publishing. I made a video in you know, again in my side business that I was stumbling more than I wanted to stumble, and I was a bit embarrassed. Um, it was a Facebook Live, and I said, maybe I should take it off and try again. And then I'm like, I caught myself, I'm like, ooh, that's what someone in my audience might say who's like kind of starting out with content creation. Oh, self doubt. Okay, self doubt. Maybe that wasn't so good. Maybe I should take it off. But I said, no, why not? Try it out. Even though I feel like I stumbled too much, why not? Try it out. Let me see. After, I'm going to keep it up for a week. And see what the audience says. And indeed, after a week, same amount of engagement and likes as I did previous videos where I didn't stumble as much. So what's the lesson there? The audience doesn't really care if you stumble or if you have typos. That's not those are those are not your real audience. Those are not true fans. People who are going to become true fans and who are your true fans, even people who don't know you yet, they will sense your energy and your presence through your writings, your, your values, your uh, purpose, your mission, that all comes through your writing as well as your videos, of course. And they will stay for that. They will stay for the thing that they cannot name, which is your values, your energy, your purpose, your mission, your, your care. That's what they're gonna come for and that's what we're gonna stay for. Typos, I, I'm not saying please go and have typos, of course, you want to, you know, do, a, do at least a basic edit, right, if not two basic edits. Uh, and your videos, I don't want you just to, like, wake up, not care about your hair at all, and just, like, turn on and be like, oh, hello, everyone. No, I'm not saying to, to purposely be, you know, but I'm saying don't be perfectionistic and don't try to be polished. Just be yourself as you, just be yourself as you would be with a client. How's that? Of course, when, before you see a client, you're going to check your hair. You're going to, you know, make sure that um, it, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to cancel the client appointment because you're not feeling good right now and you want to, can no, see, that's the, the thing that some of you do. Oh, I'm not feeling good, so I'm not going to make my video. I'm not feeling good, so I'm not going to write. What if a client were, were to schedule with you? Are you going to do that? No, you're, you're going to show up for the client, no matter how you feel, no matter if you're, you know, how perfect you are right now, you're going to show up, I mean, of course, you're going to look yourself in the mirror and make sure your hair is okay. Right? That's all you're going to do. And then you're going to maybe prepare yourself energetically for one minute by just, you know, whatever you do to breathe or prepare yourself energetically for client. Do the same thing for your videos. Do the same thing before you write. Keep the appointment with yourself because you are your most important client. Okay? And then just keep publishing. Oh, the, uh, the main lesson I was going to say about just keep publishing is this it doesn't matter what the external metrics are. People like this video, they didn't like this video. People like this writing, they didn't like this writing. The most important thing is your internal practice of not giving into self-doubt. That's the most important thing. So if I had taken down that video because I was having some self-doubt, I would have practiced reinforcing my self-doubt to say, mm, yeah, you're right, I'm not, that wasn't good enough, I'm gonna take it down. That's practicing reinforcing self-doubt. But if I instead keep it up, I am practicing kind of going against my self-doubt and go, I don't care. I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to be a rebel against my self-doubt. Rebel against my self-doubt 
and I'm going to keep it up and I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to keep it up because I'm practicing the muscle of me being good enough creator authentically in the moment as I am. And yes, of course, over time, I will keep looking at the content of the past and thinking how I can improve and practicing little bits about improvement, but don't take things down after you make it. Okay, keep it up. Okay, keep it up there. Reinforce, rebel against your self doubt. Reinforce yourself as a good enough creator. Reinforce the muscle of just being authentic, okay, without too much editing. I hope this is helpful. Uh, and thanks for those of you who are joining me live here. Alejandra, thank you so much for your great comments. I appreciate it so much. Um, Captain, thank you for your comment there. Arturo, great to see you here. Heather, thanks for joining me. Stacy, thank you. Ludovic, uh, let's see who else. Uh, Biamspa, thank you. Matt, thanks for joining as well. Okay, everyone, have a great rest of your day. And remember, just keep creating. Reinforce your ability as a creator and rebel against your self-doubt. Okay, be well.